Uh, yeah, well, Robin, I want to introduce you to Robin. He did some stuff with VXLAN and EVPN um, in larger networks, I guess. Yes, uh, indeed. <laughs> uh, let's see. And, well, um, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, my name is Robin Dermann. I'm uh, technically responsible for the data network at Ruhr University at Bochum. It's a larger network with a smaller team. And um, because uh, the size of the network uh, was not enough, we um, and, uh, and all the automation, uh, we built a data center with uh, more than 200 Nexus switches uh, during the last months. And because of fun, we did it with VXLAN EVPN instead of the typical ACI stuff. And uh, then there was uh, the need for multi chassis link aggregation, of course. And on Cisco Gear, you do it with VPC because Cisco Nexus doesn't support EVPN multi homing um, until now. Um, VPC is uh, the virtual port channel technology, it's multi chassis link aggregation feature of Cisco. Um, and traditionally, you need uh, direct interconnects between the two switches that form a virtual port channel. And with VPC fabric peering, um, these um, direct links can be eliminated. And uh, yes, Cisco shipped it first in 2019. So um, it's uh, now. It's it's not new anymore. So, uh, um, it has it has some advantages. Uh, the, the first uh, advantage is you don't need the direct links, and therefore you um, save the additional ports um, uh, on the on the switches, and uh, you save a lot of money. Especially if you do it with 200 switches, you would need 200 cables. That saved us 50,000 euros. So, um, the configuration is easy, as we can see later. And um, yeah, you, you can go a step further and uh, do the VPC keep alive link that you need for failover scenarios, uh, also over the fabric, but we didn't that. We didn't do that. So uh, disadvantages, um, yeah, you can't use the VPC um, peer link, the, VP, the, the port channel that forms the, the peer link um, can't be used as a Backup, into, um, backup, backup uplink anymore. Um, this doesn't matter because you have redundant uplinks anyway. Um, but it's a disadvantage for some people, I guess. So um, you require quality of service. That's uh, another thing you have to configure on the spine layer because if you lose VPC traffic, uh, you lose your VPC domain, and if it breaks, um, you don't want that. Um, the only um, few platforms that are supported so far are the Nexus 9300, FX, FXP, FX2, FX3 series. These are the most popular ones by now, I think. And especially it's not supported on the virtual image you can download by Cisco, so um, testing requires real hardware. And what, that was one of the reasons um, I thought about um, speaking uh, about that thing because I had to wait to get real hardware for testing it. Uh, if you know VPC, uh, you know, um, um, you may know how it works. Um, and um, yeah, the behavior changed a little bit with VXLAN EVPN, especially the, be uh, the behavior in regards to um, how, traffic is, um, how traffic is transported to which, to which port. Um, first, you, um, you have an Anycast VTAP. Uh, it's uh, an additional um, additional IP address on the loopback interface of uh, every device uh, that is a secondary IP address, and it's the same on both VPC members, um, and it gets announced in EVPN, so and that traffic to um, that is destined to a host uh, with um, on a, a port channel um, gets distributed evenly to both VPC members. Um, and um, yeah, for the opposite direction, uh, for the for the opposite case that you have um, uh, a host that is not dual homed on both switches in a VPC domain, a so-called all-front host, uh, you need a BGP feature that um, or a BGP command um, that is called advertised PIP, primary IP, 
BIP is primary IP, so that not the Anycast IP gets advertised in conjunction with the MAC address of the hosts, um, but the Unicast IP of the correct um, switch where, where you attach that host. So otherwise, half of the traffic would be directed to switch one, and the other half would be directed to switch two, and then traditionally it would traverse over the peer link to the correct switch and then out to the host, but we don't have the peer link, so the traffic has to go back uh, through the fabric, through the spine switch, and then to, to the correct switch, and you don't want that, and therefore you have to configure advertised PIP. You need quality of service on spines, I already said that, and for the sake of completeness, uh, this is pretty much the example of uh, the Cisco manual, but um, you shouldn't forget to configure quality of service on every port um, that connects to a VTAP on your spine layer, because um, um, a traffic, uh, VPC traffic, um, will will be tagged uh, with DSCP uh, will be set DSCP 56. This is the default, but you can change it. And um, another thing you would have to do is you uh, have to uh, set some values to uh, get the amount of TCAM space right. Uh, you, uh, this is uh, not fun if you forget it, because you have to reload the switch afterwards, and um, yeah, we, we uh, because of a configuration problem, I, I had to do it on um, yeah, about 50 or 60 switches uh, during, uh, um, after, after the rollout, <laughs> with hosts already connected. So don't forget. Um, but the rest of the configuration is easy. If you know VPC and if you have configured it once, um, you um, you have only one line to configure. It's a virtual peer link with destination and source IP. These are the underlay loopback address of the VTAP. And um, um, you have to do it on both switches with uh, reversed IP addresses, as you can see here. And the DSCP 56 at the end of the line is, is the default, but uh, you can change it. And it doesn't hurt to write the default down here, and it will um, it will be um, visible in the config too, but you, you never know when they change the default and uh, you need it for quality of service. This is uh, already pretty much the last slide. Um, I don't know if you are able to read it, but it uh, doesn't matter. It's uh, everything, you, everything that is specifically needed uh, to, uh, on a leaf switch for VPC peering to work. So. The VPC domain with the peer link destination. I don't Can I point on it from, from here? Uh, that interface, port channel 500, is the virtual peer link. It's a port channel interface that exists on the switch, but it has no physical ports attached anymore. Um, then um, the VXLAN tunnel endpoint uh, and uh, loopback interfaces, and uh, the last line is advertised PIP, so the, that you can see it's configured under the address family in BGP. So that's it pretty much. Um, as I already said in the beginning, Cisco doesn't support EVP and multi-homing. Um, in yesterday evening I heard that the hardware would support it already, but the software doesn't if I understand that correctly. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, Arista, seems, uh, Arista supports EV, EVP and multi-homing. Uh, this is what I learned at the breakfast. Uh, and um, Juniper seems too. And uh, Dell, I don't know about Dell. Does anyone use Dell switches in a data center? I don't know. And uh, yeah, but um, that's it. And um, yeah, the thing is, um, you can save money and you can save cables and you can save power, almost 40 or 50 watts, I think, <laughs> when, you, when, you, um, when you don't use 200 cables. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, uh, test it. Yes, yes.
Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, well, I introduced you with um, eVPN and large networks, so the Uni Bochum is also a large network, I hope. Yes. Uh, and thank you for your presentation. Any questions real for Robin? So I'll see at least one hand in the middle. Uh, regarding the supported platforms, um, the spines uh, don't necessarily need to be FX or FX2 series, right? Uh, no, the spines doesn't need to support it anyway. Okay. They just uh, uh, the, the traffic goes just goes through the spines. Okay, thank you. Any further questions so far? We have at least uh, some from the ch internet chat, so. Um, the question is, uh, a topology, topology diagram would have been useful. Did I get it right that the VPC is between the, uh, the tall leaf switches and uh, the only connected through the spine? Yes, this is correct. Okay, topology diagram uh, will uh, follow uh, <laughs> later. Um, yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, the VPC domain is between two leaf switches in the same, usually in the same rack only, yes. And uh, they are connected via the links to, through the spines. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that makes sense for me, at least because you said some features are needed in the spines because um, where you are in, or your endpoints are at the leaves. Well, any further questions? So far not, so we close here, uh, say thank you to Robin and we will continue.